All right, guys, let's take a look at what the best starting venomous snake should be. Now, let's talk about something, first of all, that shouldn't be a good starting venomous snake. Anything like this, guys, rattlesnakes are the worst first-time venomous snake that I've seen to date. And I keep seeing more people getting rattlesnakes as their first venomous snake. Just because they're cheap and readily available does not make them a good venomous snake. But what then would make a good venomous snake? There's three points that I want you guys to consider when you get your first venomous snake. First of all, the readability of antivenom where you're from. Secondly, your level of experience when it comes to venomous snakes. And thirdly, the toxicity of that snake. Bardavir is a pristine example of a species of venomous snake that you should not get as a first time keeper. This is a viper and they're part of the Viperidae family group and this is a hundred pacer. Extremely, extremely toxic. So definitely an absolutely horrible idea to get as a first time venomous snake. But let's look at a few other Viperidae that do after all make good starting venomous snakes. Now here for example is a viper that I would recommend for a first time keeper, which is the Agishodon Contortrix or more commonly known as the Copperhead Vipers. These guys, granted, still are toxic, but they're not as toxic as most of your other terrestrial vipers. They eat easily and the upkeep of them is relatively easy. So when it comes to a first time venomous viper that I would recommend, remember guys, these are all recommendations, not rules. Everyone has their own idea and opinion on venomous. This is my opinion, one of the best vipers you can get as a first time venomous keeper. Or if that doesn't trickle your fancy enough, Another species that I would recommend is the Ogovopus ocinibensis, which is the Hime Habu Vipers. Now, a lot of you don't even know what this is, especially if you're clicked onto this video to learn about venomous snakes now. Now, these guys are a viper species from the Ryukyu Islands of Japan. Now, I would recommend them... Oh, shit, and this boy's so deep in shit. Sorry, my guy. I would recommend them as a first-time venomous snake, because first of all, they're not as toxic. They're considered to be a mildly venomous species. 100% I disagree with that, but when it comes to attitude wise and things like that, they eat easily, they're easy to upkeep and relatively affordable again to maintain. So another great, great suggestion for a starting viper species. All right, let's take a look at another viper species that I would recommend as a starting venomous snake. Although there are quite a few cons when it comes to boreal vipers like this white lip viper over here. First of all, they're not as easy to keep as most other vipers. Secondly, if you don't buy from a reliable person and you don't get a guaranteed feeder, you are in for a mission. Their venom is not as bad as other Tremorosaurus species, which is why, again, I recommend them because they're not as toxic. Those are the three... <laughs> Let me just close that for my camera man. Those are the three vipers that I would recommend. Now let's take a look at some Calubridae and Elipidae that I would recommend as good starting venomous snakes. And right off the bat when it comes to Elipidae, the, one of the best recommendations I can make you to start out with Elipidae is what you see over here, the Aspidileps lubricus calvalisi. Now these guys, <laughs> they do have a very ridiculous feeding response as you guys can see. That's not him being defensive, that's him just having a serious food drive. They're not as toxic as most other elapidae, which make them a great starting venomous elapidae. Now let's take a look at an example of an extremely bad elapid to get as a first time venomous snake, which is any true cobra. Cobras have the worst disposition. They're fast. They can go from calm to crazy in a matter of seconds. This little guy, the Naja Atro here, is another animal that I'm using as an example as a bad starting venomous snake to get because, well, as you guys can see over there, he's sporadic, he's funky, and he's definitely not good on the hook. So when it comes to elapids, the only true recommendation I can really give you guys would be, as you saw around before, is Aspidilaps lubricus calisi or other family me members of the Aspidilaps genus. All right, now venomous colubrid I recommend for you as a starting venomous snake is this tiny little guy right over here, a Western hognose. These guys are venomous, sh granted, but they've got a very minor venom. But even though they have an extremely minor venom, they're having people with extreme bad reactions to their venom. I don't have any other venomous that I can show you guys in the colubrid family group other than this that I'd suggest because, well, basically, this is all that I would suggest out of the colubrid family group. Now let's talk about the other three points, availability of antivenom, uh, toxicity and uh, your experience level. Why, first of all, did I say your experience level? Now let's take a look at this, for example. There are three major groups of venomous. Calibridae, Elapidae, and Viperidae. I did show you guys now an example of each and every single one of these. And when it comes to experience, each and every single one of these are completely different. When it comes to arboreal vipers, they're not as difficult to work with as terrestrials, other than the keeping standard. Now when it comes to terrestrial vipers, in general, my experience has been quite rough. They're Toxic, they're crazy, they fly off the hook, they come at you. 
So again, that's what I'm saying. Your experience level is extremely dependent on what is your first time venomous snake. Now, a, a good a good way of approaching the fact that um, anti venom should be available. The best thing you can do is get a snake local from your area. If you get a snake local from your area, make sure you get it on permit the legal route. Don't go now and catch wild individuals and hope that that's going to be your means to an end or a way for you to tame venomous snakes without having to the hassle. Remember, we gotta stay responsible, even other than a safe way of keeping.